it's important to tell at this point that uh, I, once again, this is another situation of Ditaku thinks the lore sucks. <laughs> um, so, instead of just having the, like, be like, oh, gold dragons are one species, silver dragons are another species, red dragons are another species, and what have you, I have always been of the opinion that that was dumb. And yes. that it's like, uh, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. And so, rather than it be just, oh, they're all different species, it's, no, it's more an ecumenical choice. Yep. Um, they're all one species, but it's more that, you know, oh, if they think a particular way, then they will go. And so, for instance, the, the difference between golds and reds is that, oh, you know, one of them is, I am the goodiest of the goody goods, and the other one is, nah, you know. Uh, it's all about number number one, baby. Yep. So, um, that, that's the way I, I approached it. And so, um, this is important to know because of later. What yeah. we, we, Otherwise, this wouldn't yeah. make a great deal of sense. Yes. Uh, along the way, Black Bay... Uh, explains that when he first arrived in this world, he met seven warriors who could help them along their way. Um, we only ended up meeting a couple of them before the campaign was out, but we do meet a new friend who was uh, Lucius's uh, Noodle's new character, Garman. He was a dual-class ranger slash rogue with an intense racial hatred aimed at kobolds. Uh, thank Goblin Slayer, but kobolds, and, and you're kind of on the right direction. Yeah, in fact, he was very, <laughs> very heavily inspired by by Goblin Slayer, uh, to the point that, as I recall, we never actually saw his face. He nope. was constantly just wearing a, bu- a bucket helm. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was just very, very, very uh, laconic very, and very pragmatic. <laughs> Which I, I actually thought was kind of funny because uh, he... Not only that, but he also had what we would later coin as Gar Math, where he Gar just math. Had, he had a very unique reasoning process through things. <laughs> and he actually, um, it was a little bit later, but he explains this process to Black Bay while the others are having a different conversation. And he's like, think about it. Being a kobold is more than just what you're born as. It's also the attitude, the way you carry yourself. And Black Bay kind of has this epiphany. It's like, wait, I don't like brigands. Does that mean brigands and kobolds are the same thing? And Itaku goes, I, oh, a bucket helm just materializes <laughs> on Black Bay's head. Yep. Yeah. He, too, understood Garma. It all made sense at that point. Yep, it all came together. Yeah, it's like Doofenshmirtz and the old, uh, and platypus. <laughs> Perry the platypus? <laughs> but, uh... Platypus is the thing that holds you down, man! <laughs> I'm not speaking metaphorically. <laughs> I, but, that's, uh, that's pretty much how it was. <laughs> it was, it was. Um, so I don't have any more notes going forward, so this is from memory going on. Uh, I believe the next stop, we ended up going north to the Dwarven Kingdom and the Twin Peaks. Now, take a wild guess what that's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Now, that said, um, the Dwarven Kingdom was in ruins. And then <laughs> Kazadon gets accosted by an, a, 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 what was it, a, a gel cube? He gets accosted by a, uh, yes, a gelatinous cube. Gelatinous cube that had levels in Monk. So it had the exact same powers that Kazadon had. And Kazadon mm-hmm. got bodied. Like, repeatedly. <laughs> it's not that we didn't want to help, it's that we were currently fighting, um... You were fighting a, uh, not Wendigo. Oh, right, the huge undead monster that was, like, literally plowing through buildings to get a shot at us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Laguna, Garman, and Black Bay were, were kind of busy dealing with him, uh, while Kazadon was being repeatedly bodied, and he ends up meeting Grazine again, and he's like, do you want true strength? And Kazadon just kind of like, uh-huh. He's like, well, you, you don't want to gain. You must give up something in return. So you're going 
to give up your bonus action in return for this great power. And if you can manage this training, you will know, have power far greater than in anything that you currently possess. He doesn't even get one encounter. He does not manage even one fight without screwing this up. <laughs> well, he thought he'd be he thought he'd be funny. He thought he'd be smart. And, he, and so instead of going, I use my bonus action, he goes, I use my additional turn. Yeah. And didn't understand why these weird hairline fractures started forming up his hands and forearms. Almost like the GM was giving him a subtle warning about something. Now, he didn't. He didn't get it. Yeah, he learned nothing from that experience. So, yeah, <laughs> that was a recurring theme because this was not something where he's like, "Oh no, I made a mistake. I should stop right away." He kept doing this, and this was pretty consistent until the campaign was out. Um. Hmm. Because we, we destroy the Wendigo eventually, and I think Garman and, and Black Bay baited him, and then Laguna like set the dude on fire from from above. And yeah, right. we ended. Hmm. I said, "Yeah, that seems right." Yep. Uh, then we ran into the undead king of the dwarven uh, home, the mountain home, and Black Bay launched into one of his, you know, ah, you are a little more than a brigand who who is. Stealing from the corpses of your own people. You are no ruler. You, you, you rule an empire of ashes, and you're the one who set the flame. And, yeah, somehow Black Bay became the face of the party. No idea why. Cough, cough. He was a, he was a fun character. <laughs> he was a fun I, character. I, I, I want to bring him him or, like, one of his uh, children as a, as a character sometime in the future, just because it was so much fun. And I'm not just saying that because he's a homebrew race. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought he legitimately was a fun character. <clears throat> yep. And, and, and it was kind of cute, the, uh, the the back and forth that you and uh, Jakara had. Yep. <laughs> and she... Uh, I, I I don't even know what you call it, but I, I frustrated her so bad. And funny enough, it's perfectly in character for a war cur because she was like, let me smash... And Black Bay, meanwhile, was like, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight, boss fight. <laughs> she started flirting with him. Um, Pretty early on. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, he just kind of was like very anime harem protagonist, just kind of very dimly unaware of it. It, it was it was kind of cute. And Gosh, she I, sure I is it, nice. I'm glad we're friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't friend zone me. <laughs> and see, the funny thing was, is that like the other, the other um, members of the party were like, "Man, I wish I could get heals the way that you know Black Bay does," and yet they never put themselves in the line of fire. <laughs> you were the only one consistently getting hit, right? And they're like, "Why do you get heals all the time?" I'm like, yeah, I can't imagine why. It's a mystery. Mm. I mean, at least, yeah. you know, it makes sense. Laguna was supposed to be, like, behind me casting spells, which he was good at. But yeah. Kazadon had a hard time putting his head around this principle. I tried <laughs> to actually threaten Kazadon. I never really consistently could. And I felt kind of bad because it's like his numbers were so high. And I'm like, anything that could actually threaten him would be, like, really lethal to the rest of you guys. So I'm like, yeah. I, had to, I had to be really... And that's kind of my problem with him as as uh, just, like, I, I wanted to challenge him. Right. The things that challenged him would be way out of your guys' league. And I'm not saying that, you know, that as an indictment to, to Laguna or to Black Bay. But, like, just... Jiraka J- J- was the only... He, uh, healer in the group. Yep, uh, because we gave up both our clerics because uh, Noodle and I had gotten frustrated. So, so you know, we I only had so many heals, and uh, it helped a little bit when you got lay on hands. But right, but know. I could I could only heal other people. I I couldn't actually use that on myself. 
I, I had the crazy diamond problem. I could heal other people, but not well, me. Well, you you could actually. You can heal yourself, but you know it's a heal or heal thyself type of situation. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> You're touching yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we destroy the, the undead king, and Black Bay is like, "This is this is a shame. This mountain home was was once beautiful and and full of culture and industry." So. You know, I'm going to make this land my own and, and you know, hopefully put to rest the spirits of the, these who have perished and, and hope that by seeing their mountain home flourish again, uh, that maybe their souls might be at peace. And the thing, <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. we ended up summoning a genie. <laughs> okay. Now, the genie what was from the oil lamp that we had liberated earlier. And he's like, okay, what do you guys desire? And Black Bay is like, oh, well, I want to, I want to become great among my people. And, I remember this. <laughs> mm, mm, I should have just let it happen. But he, he turns to Black Bay first. He goes, what do you want? I want to be great among my people. I want to be strong. I want to be brave. I want to be competent. I want to be a great leader. And he's like, oh, I got this this cool potion that will give you like all these powers. And Black Bear's like, no, there is no shortcut to success. Uh, I will work and do it my own way because that is how my people do things. And he's like, fine, fair enough. <laughs> and mm, this made me so mad because he turns to Kazadon and Kazadon bites my shtick. <laughs> this stupid chicken nugget. It's like, no, no, I have to be cool and strong, because that's how my people are. Like, no, your people are a bunch of whinging go-go buzz. <laughs> this, this annoying, whinging, stooping, cringing, crawling little yes worm. And I, like, I, out of character, I, I told Itaku, I was like, dude, he's a go-go from Sonic Boom. And Itaku was like, what's a go go <laughs> Yeah, because I hadn't seen Sonic Boom so at that point. So we, we sat down, and I showed him the episode, and he's like, oh my god, he is a Gogo Ball. Yeah, no. No, he pretty much is. <laughs> and this worm bites my shtick and starts trying to be all cool and noble. It's like, no, it's too late for that. <laughs> it's too late for that. You're just aping me. <laughs> and so then... The genie's like, okay, well, if you two aren't interested, maybe the wizard is interested. And Laguna's like, oh boy, I just have to drink this potion and I'll get, like, phenomenal cosmic power. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> don't do it. I'm warning you. And he really was on the cusp of taking it. And I'm like, dude, this is so obviously a trap. You don't need the meta knowledge that I have to know that this is a terrible plan. Yeah. <laughs> Snack, he was Snack tempted, knew. though. Snack knew that basically he would he would become a, a demon. A demon, he, yeah. Uh... <laughs> but he was tempted. He was <laughs> so close. I was going to get him. He was really tempted. And I'm just like... Wow, dude. Uh, you almost walked yeah, into that thing. without any help. That's a thing. I uh I don't I don't like cursed items. If if people are going to, you know, screw themselves, I uh, I give them enough rope to do so on their own. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> so ultimately we, we like... all turn him down, but Laguna was pretty close there. <laughs> Yeah, so the entire like, ha, huh, you're cursed, and now you have the curse of the the, uh, the the bad item. It's like, no, that's dumb. Yeah. So yeah. the genie kind of shrugs, and he's like, okay, you're lost, peace out, and leaves. And then it turns out we're actually just south of where the Aracocra are. And Kazadon kind of insists, and I'm like, fine, I'll humor you. And we head out to see his familial village. And we also learned that they worship lesser wind spirits as, like, their pantheon. <laughs> and 
And Garman repeatedly mocks them for this. Rightfully so. <laughs> and Ditaku was like, okay, okay, Kazadan, we'll go see your people. And all of them, all the Arakokra, are these spineless, whimpering, whinging, guilt tripping little bird people. And they're just like, well, I don't know. Yeah, and they're all <laughs> like that. And even Black Bay, who has been remarkably patient, kind of like grits his teeth and is like, I hate it here, I hate it here, I hate it here, I hate it here, I hate it here. <laughs> so they start getting attacked. And um, I forget who uh, Kobolds did? of all things. Kobolds were attacking them. So Garman's like, yes, sign me up. I am ready to go. And, Gar and Black Bay's like, okay, you know what? This has to be some give and take relationship here. So Black Bay, rather <laughs> in a rather mercenary fashion, that's a, maybe a little out of character for him. I'm, I don't know if I went too far or not, but he sat down this very dense trade agreement in front of the Arakokra elder and was like, okay, sign this, agree to my trade terms, trade with my new kingdom, and I will assist you in all matters of military intervention as necessary. And of course, I get the, well, I don't know. And it's like, yeah, you want your village saved or don't you? <laughs> so I strong arm the Aarakocra into agreeing. <laughs> and Black Bay then goes out with Garman to start saving them from the kobolds. And I forget the exact course of escalation, but we ended up having a Gundam fight. <laughs> because, um,. Yeah, basically, uh, they they started summoning um, large walker siege weapons, and you guys, you know, got large walker siege weapons too, and you yep. basically, yeah, Gundam fought. Yep, and then Laguna got exploded. Um, what happens when you try to catch an artillery shell? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what he thought would happen, but... I mean, he tried, so hats off. Um, I was actually kind of upset. I was like, oh, that, that's a shame. Laguna had, had come a long way in a short time, so... And to be perfectly honest, I gave him the options. Like, hey, dude, do you want to... Because I'll give the, you know... Oh, even though even though you were brought to zero HP, you know, you, you, you would, you know, hang on. Right. Z J just enough to squeak by kind of thing. Yeah. Which I think here's is fair. Thing. Yeah, and here's the thing, like... I honestly, and, and this is a thing uh, I, that I don't think enough people really do, is like, if it's more fun, then the rules can be fudged a little bit. Yep. And if if it's, if that's going to be what, what the, the kind of as the GM need to be kind of cognizant of that and like, okay, you know... In this situation, you know, we'll we'll kind of fudge things, or right. It, it really, it, you kind of have to the the, the at, you know, people talk about like a game sense or as a player, yeah. but like you need to have a sense as a GM to like kind of kind of read the situation. And go, you know, maybe maybe I will just go, you know, oh, rules is written. It's like no, no, no. It'll be more more fulfilling for everybody if this happens. And I offered, it's like, oh, dude, that that was like really, he got he got exploded. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Bad. And I'm like, dude, I, oh man, that's uh, that's some bad luck right there. Um, because honestly, Laguna, like he had kind of the worst stats. He actually rolled for his stats just to see what they were, and because of that, he kind of got shafted and yeah so, he did and despite that he still did a great job yeah and i tried to tried to 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 you know not be as merciless to him as i as i would otherwise but i'm like you know if you if you want yeah we could we could fudge this it's all right you can survive and he goes no no i you know i i i've done what i wanted to do with laguna i want to try some something else right so laguna perished in the middle of the uh, the kobold siege which just made Garman hate kobolds even more if that was somehow yep. possible yeah so uh, eventually we win the day and we end up meeting one of black bay's friends along the way um 
But I think that's where the campaign essentially ended. Yeah, we were going to actually counterattack against the Kobolds, but at that point, Kazanon's player was like, you guys suck, you're bullying me, which is... <laughs> which we were absolutely not. But, so yeah, we just kind of called it there. Um, so we we did have some takeaways. Like We, we declared that uh, Black Bay and Garman had uh, sworn to a brotherhood, uh, sworn... Uh, familial bond, and he eventually, indeed, Black Bay indeed married Jiraka. She, he did not ignore her advances forever. Uh, and he probably went on and had many, many, many children. So, that's a happy ending, I guess. Um, yeah, and around this time, we shifted gears back to Exalted. 